Watching sunrise or sunset from the top of Mauna Kea is a cherished activity for visitors to Hawaii, but the mountain is also home to some of the most iconic telescopes in existence, which have done everything from capturing the first image of a black hole to discovering new objects in our solar system. The 13,000 plus foot summit of Mauna Kea places it high above the clouds and away from light pollution for some of the best seeing conditions on Earth. I'm Kelly Kaiser Witt, and in January 2025, my daughter Lucy and I took a tour with Mauna Kea Summit Adventures. Our tour guide, Travis, drove us to each of the telescopes, and then we watched sunset and went partway down the mountain for a tour of the stars with their 11 inch telescope. Any discussion of the telescopes atop Mauna Kea should mention the connection of the Hawaiian people to the mountain. This land is sacred to Hawaiians, as it is where the earth meets the sky. For centuries, Native Hawaiians made multi-day pilgrimages to walk to the top of Mauna Kea and commune with their ancestors. The mere existence of these telescopes is a contentious issue. But no one denies the incredible discoveries that have been made about the universe we live in from the top of Mauna Kea. This telescope on Mauna Kea is one of the ten radio dishes that make up the very long baseline array. The other nine are scattered across the U.S. from New Hampshire to the Virgin Islands. This array not only probes distant galaxies, but also provides data on continental drift and tiny variations in Earth's rotation. The submillimeter array is home to eight radio dishes. It also makes up part of the Event Horizon Telescope, which was the first to image a black hole. Behind me, from left to right, are the Gemini North Telescope, the University of Hawaii 2.2 meter telescope, and the United Kingdom Infrared Telescope. The Gemini North Telescope, along with its twin in Chile, use optical and infrared eyes to reveal the universe. A recent discovery from Gemini North involved the merging of two active young galaxies near the cosmic dawn. The telescopes here are, from right to left, NASA's Infrared Telescope Facility, the two Keck telescopes, and the Subaru Telescope. Lower down, we get a peek at the Submillimeter Array and the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope. These telescopes all make discoveries that are constantly in the news. The Infrared Telescope Facility recently analyzed the light from a mini-moon that orbited Earth in late 2024 and found it was most likely a chunk of the real moon, blasted off in an impact a few thousand years ago. The Keck telescopes recently discovered nine rings around a distant galaxy now dubbed the Bullseye Galaxy and the Subaru Telescope recently helped confirm the existence of newly discovered moons around Uranus and Neptune. The summit of Mauna Kea can be extremely cold and windy. Fortunately, the tour group supplies you with a parka and gloves. As an illustration of just how windy it can be on the summit, here's a shot from our tour van that shows how some signs have holes in them. If the signs didn't have holes, they'd be constantly blowing down. If you watch sunset from the summit, don't forget half the show is behind you. If you turn around, you'll see the shadow of Earth. Normally, we see a nice round blue curve along the horizon, but from the top of a pointy mountain, you will see Earth's shadow tracing the shape of the mountain. After sunset, we got to see the two Keck telescopes opening up for their nightly observing sessions. It was fun to see, and with an extraordinarily beautiful background but we were also eager to get back into the warm van. After sunset, all visitors must leave the mountaintop, so we headed down closer to the visitor center in order to stargaze. I didn't take any video or photos during our stargazing event. To preserve your night vision, it's best not to look at any bright screens or even the moon. We had a fabulous 90-minute star party, and because the airspace above Mauna Kea is a no-fly zone, our guide was able to use a laser pointer to trace out the delights of the sky at 19 degrees north latitude. I still wasn't far enough south to see the Magellanic Clouds, but hopefully that will be in a future travel video.